Right, so this um, video is going to be about implants and loadouts. So I'm going to talk about what implants for what loadout. Now, there's about a thousand different loadouts you could have on an engineer. Well, not quite a thousand, but you can have a lot of loadouts. You can have an anti-tank loadout. You can have a max loadout. Um, you can have an anti-tank max loadout. You can have a, an, you can have a pocket engineer loadout. You can have a vehicle loadout. You could have this loadout, that loadout. You can have a loadout for when your grandma comes around and is annoying you while you're trying to play uh, Planet Side. You can have a loadout for when your dad comes in your room and starts trying to talk to you while you've got your headphones on. You can have a loadout for every day of the week if you really wanted. The engineer has so many options. Now I'm going to talk about the loadout I use and I'm going to talk about the loadout that you should probably try and work towards. So as I've said a thousand times, you're not frontlining as an engineer. You're not trying to build a loadout that is frontlining. Okay, you backline. Now you do get a lot of kills as an engineer using the monitor and various bits and bobs, but you shouldn't be relying on, um, you shouldn't really go around trying to rely on your guns. Your guns are there to protect you in a defensive way. They're not meant to go around killing everybody. That's the job of the heavy assault. You're a defensive class and that's what you do. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some of the loadouts that I use and I'm gonna briefly talk about implants, what implants I would recommend, what implants you should be using. So straight off the bat, this is um, what, what I would recommend, what loadout I use is Robotics Tech and let me have a look so robotics tech and where was it regeneration so this is what i've been using the most is robotics tech i use spitfire turret i use um mines normally bouncing base i would use advanced shield capacitor i would use either sticky grenades or amp grenades sticky grenades because obviously you don't have amp because you need ASP 100 for that. And then guns wise, I would use the GD23. Now, I regen pretty slow as an engineer. My health regens really slow. But I also have the ability to actually get health back by using regeneration. Now, what um, I would suggest is running a loadout like this just for casual every day just running and gunning okay you're nothing special when using this loadout but it's a loadout that i run on the regular basis so it's a loadout that i like to run i like to put mines down now as i said in previous videos put mines down where enemies not going to look so they're going to they're going to come around and step on them bang you know they're going to come up here you know not really paying attention and bang you know don't put it in the line of sight of the enemy. Um, the enemy will just shoot them and kill them. Also with mines, do not put them on the point, okay? Don't chuck them down here, because if you're stood right next to them, somebody will blow them up by shooting them. So, you know, don't put them on or, you know, on a point. Put them around the point where people are gonna get, you know, you're gonna get the odd kill. Um, so yeah. So I always run advanced shield capacitor, generally. I tend to either run that or nano weave. I'll only run flak armor when I need, um, when I'm manning the anti infantry turret. So loadout number one is the go-to loadout that every engineer should have in his arsenal. And that's the anti infantry monitor loadout. This consists of anti infantry monitor. It consists of either auxiliary shield or hard light barrier flak armor okay implants wise you will need to use the jockey or the robotics tech now this is what you would have as an infantry um, anti-infantry loadout you need to put down your spitfire to your anti-infantry monitor it so let me just select it real quick so you're putting it down somewhere 
like a like you're not putting it in a doorway now i'm going to talk about advanced tactics in another video but i'm going to try and give you a rough insight into this so with this um normally people would put this down somewhere where the enemy struggles to shoot at them but at the same time they catch people coming around the corner um so that's really helpful but i'm going to stick just stick to loadouts in this video but um generally this is the first loadout that you need as any engineer main if you're concentrating on anti-infantry now the second um loadout that i always run is so i use regeneration i use robotics tech i use this spitfire turret auxiliary shield or i would run bouncing base or c4 i tend to run bouncing base loads so most of the time i would run advanced shield capacitor or i would run nano weave um, i would pick between these two so that is a second um, really go-to loadout that I would use. Now this is own, my own personal opinion. You could swap this out for Survivalist. And you could swap this out for Nano Weave. Or you could keep Advanced Shield Capacitor. Now you've got to realise that these don't stack. Um, another thing to do is get Flak Armour. So you could have Flak Armour and you could have um, Survivalist they do really well together because survivalist gets you out of situations even if you've got grenades coming at you from all angles you can survive you know somewhat you always generally evolve around robotics tech because if you're using spitfire turret you can your your spitfire turret will become um it will become a beast by using these so yeah so as you can see it turns a, a, a different color this is because your um, engineer mana turret has 25% damage resistance and at max rank it will heal over time I believe um, so yeah so just to check so I'm talking up my ass. one sec there we go yeah so the damage resistance also applies to engineer when the mountain and deployed mana turret uh, so uh, 25 health per second and 25% damage yeah so okay good stuff so yeah, you always really want to be running this. It gives your uh, Spitfire turret a bit more beefy. It can be a bit more beefy. So, the third loadout that you want to do is a point hold loadout. Now, a point hold loadout is important. For point holding, generally you want to pick these here. So, you want to pick... You always want to pick Safeguard. And you want to pick Athlete for point holding. Now, point holding is when you are holding a point and you're relying on a squad to do squad-based stuff. It's kind of hard um, to explain, but you really need to research what point holding is to get the gist of it. But point holding is when you have a group of medics, engineers and heavies, and they all go to the point and they do what's called advanced point holding. Now you're going to be medicked a lot because you're going to die a lot generally you're going to need flak armor you need to always try and run sa uh, safeguard level five really useful um so yeah so this is what i would recommend for point holding it's just a bog standard loadout you could switch it out for auxiliary shield and you could have auxiliary shield and maybe safeguard that would be a good shout but really um you're there to give ammo to your allies you're also there to um put up a turret or whatever you can really to help now this is what i would use normally if if i was with a group and i was doing point holds normally you would use the anti-infantry monitor loadout you would really be using that most of the time if not all the time there's never a time when you wouldn't want to use this. So, with this loadout, you want to be using the Hunter CQX um, thing. Generally, you can... You want to be using this with recon darts. 
So recon dots are useful for spotting the enemy. If you're point holding or defending a position, you will be able to spot the enemy. Really useful. So generally when you're running any loadout that's not point hold Pacific loadout, you could be running the NS pilot or you could run the commissioner or whatever really. You could be running the commissioner or the underboss. Um, I would recommend running them instead. You don't need to always carry the hunter bow around, but it is useful as an engineer because you get unlimited darts because you can keep giving yourself ammo. So with that said, so um, the next real um, thing for me is a vehicle loadout. Now, what does it mean by what do I mean by vehicle loadout? So with vehicle loadout, you generally pick sweeper hood and um, ammo printer. So there you go, sweeper hood and ammo printer. So these are the two go-tos for um, vehicle. Now, what you pick in your vehicle loadout can be dependent on, you know, the situation. So if you want to use a lot of tank mines, you could put tank mines down. Um, as you're driving around, you could get out, put a couple of tank mines down, get out. C4 explosives also are useful. You can um, jump out and C4 a vehicle. You can C4 infantry, you know, whatever really. Um, generally on a vehicle loadout, you wouldn't use hard light barriers. You wouldn't use medical kits. You wouldn't really use bouncing betties and you wouldn't use auxiliary shields. You wouldn't use stuff like um, restoration kits. You generally pick tank mines or explosives. So it depends if you do a lot of vehicle play. Also in a vehicle loadout, you would use nano repair grenade because that's really the go-to and you would use Spitfire turret. Now, let me just show you briefly what, um, why you would use the Spitfire. So the Spitfire gives you some protection against your tank being snuck up on. So obviously if a vehicle's coming at you, it's not gonna shoot the vehicle, but if a light assault's coming at you with C4 to try and destroy your vehicle, um, then it gives you, so say I'm in my Sunderer, I'm kind of waiting around, you could put down Spitfire turret and then jump in your vehicle. And while you wait here in your vehicle, if an enemy comes and it starts firing at it, at it you can be like, whoa, I'm out of here, I'm going. So you just zoom off, you go. And that's it. So really useful, um, really useful to, really, really useful to defend yourself. Now I'm just going to go back over here a sec, so I can carry on. Now there's, there's hundreds of loadouts, hundreds of different loadouts. You could have an anti-max loadout with... Um, you could have an anti-max loadout with an archer um, to kill the max. But these are what I would really recommend. So um, let me just go to my main account over on I'm just gonna go nip over to Indar real quick so um, I'm just gonna go over to Indar and I'll show you what I use on my engineer so the more advanced stuff that you get are like advanced um, like bionics is more you get that more as you play the game because you have to put ISO into I'll, I'll show you when we get over there. Now, it takes a while for me to load in because the game's really slow. Jesus. Esamir has fallen to the Vanu sovereignty. Ah, uh, that's why. Clear out of that area. Okay, we've got to move to Indar. So yeah, we've been to Indar. We just we just walked to there. So yeah, having having stuff like bionics, stuff like that is is more. Um, you get them from packs, what you unlock with ISO. So straight off the bat, really, you're not going to have that as a new player. Um, but I'm just going to give you an insight into what I use. Most of the stuff is really um, new player friendly. Like you could pick them up as a new player. You don't really have to um, have really crazy loadouts. Generally it's, generally, it's pretty basic stuff. Mm. 
Right, and we're here, finally. Right. So, um, what you want to be doing, what you want to be looking at. So, this is my um, anti-vehicle slash anti-infantry loadout. As you can see here, um, I'm just going to go over here real quick. Just going to go down here real quick. Just to show you, because out the way a little bit. So, this is my anti-infantry uh, loadout. This is what I generally pick for going against infantry. Now, this is like point holding, or I would um, really just be um, going to a point to try and attack it. I would put the anti-infantry monitor it down. Now, you obviously require these two implants. You would require jockey, and you would require you to have um, robotics tech. So yeah, so flak armor, and I use the ordnance dampener. Now these, um, you find these over at Sanctuary over here. So yeah, so you find these at Sanctuary. Now um, you could have whatever you want, really. You could have caltrops, etc. I use, I always use ordnance dampener. Um, really useful. You're not probably going to have that as a new player. It takes merit points to earn one of them. Um, but I would look into that if you go um, to Sanctuary and you look for the merit point vendor. So yeah, so I use this now. I have secondary. Uh, I use the claw as a secondary, just because I'm trying to erect in the gun kind of slowly. So yeah, so this is my go-to for anti-infantry and point holding. Now the second loadout I use, I use. Um, anything really so most of the time uh, I was using a lot of LMGs this is because I was going for the God Saw, which is an LMG directive weapon um, but really I would recommend the carbines so stuff like the bandit is useful uh, the GD7F so generally I tend to run the GD7F like this I will run the GD7F and I will run it with so let me just select this loadout section so here, as you can see, um, this is my general purpose loadout. This is what I would run the most. I would run um, robotics tech and I would run regeneration. This is generally it. And I would use a Spitfire Man, turret. I would have a bandit or something carbine related. And I would have a shot, a pistol or a shotgun secretary. Um, Obviously, you can't have the shotgun secretary as a new player, so I would pick a pistol. I would have the underboss or the pilot or, or the commissioner. I would pick one of them. I would get used to hitting headshots with it. And, yeah. So this is really good as a, a general purpose loadout. Now, stuff like an anti-vehicle loadout is important. So this is my anti-vehicle loadout. This is what I've been using. I use demolitions pouch with C4. I use Spitfire turret, and I have um, ammo printer, and then I use um, sweep hood to find enemy mines. So yeah. So NS66 Punisher I use. I use this to repair vehicles at a distance. I can also repair maxes. Um, this is kind of my go-to. It's not a, a killing machine in terms of enemy infantry. This is just purely for vehicles. So I don't know why I carry the piston around. I generally carry either the crossbow or um, a pistol. Well, I think I was using the, I think I was using the piston for something. So yeah. So the other one I use, which I don't use that often, is the mine um, class. So I have a different setup. So I use tank mines, a lot of tank mines. I use sweeper hood and um, I don't use the other one. What's the other one? So, um, yeah, there we go. So I use ammo printer and sweeper hood. And this is the, the vehicle loadout I would pick to um, put mines down. This is the vehicle loadout I would pick to put to carry um, C4. So these are what I go to on the regular. I don't have a point hold loadout because I don't do point holding or advanced point holding. This is just, you know, just to give you an insight 
into you know certain things I do and how I do them now implants wise I would recommend let me just show you real quick so implants wise I would recommend getting yourself jockey I would recommend getting yourself um, sweeper hood I would recommend robotics tech I would recommend ammo printer um, other implants I would recommend is survivalist that can keep you alive for a long period of time all these other ones are good like battle hardened is good but I feel that going around killing infantry is something you're not going to be doing too much of symbio and symbio and regeneration is also pretty good um, symbio will keep you alive that little bit longer in for, you know to get the kill but you know as I said don't feel the need to go around and front line and try and kill heavy assaults you're not killing heavy assaults you are an engineer so you need to act like it and start putting down equipment and helping your team out giving them ammo that kind of thing I'll just briefly talk about this because this is a electro tech uh, it's an engineer only implant I do not use it you could use it to revive maxes or help maxes out so if a max was low um, and you broke your shield you would revive you know you would heal the max over time other than that, I don't see it useful. You have to take damage in order to activate it, and I don't see it useful. Bionics is something that you get when you buy a pack. Now, you have a chance to unlock it. If you go to Department, you go across to Implants, you have a chance to buy an ISO Recycler, and, or a Recycler, and you, you have a chance to unlock it. Now, people have been running Bionics and Symbio, like this. And then they run a bog standard loadout like this. EMP grenade, advanced shield capacitor, Spitfire turret, and GD7F. Now, it's not a bad loadout to use. I don't use it because um, simple fact is when I die, a medic will be trying to get me up and I will just be getting killed over and over again. Because when you, you spawn, um, sorry, when you get medicked, you re you revive your, you get revived with no shield. And because this is shield, it puts it all into shield. So it puts health into shield and makes you have uh, 400 shield instead of 400 health. So you end up with um, a load of shield. You basically die straight away. So you keep dying and dying and dying. So, uh, yeah, I don't use it. Um, would I recommend getting it as a new player? Not really. I wouldn't recommend wasting your ISO on it. I would concentrate, instead of getting the packs and trying to unlock it, I would concentrate on getting Jockey and I would concentrate on getting Robotics Tech. Robotics Tech is by far the most used you would use. You could have Regeneration. But, but, but I would get Robotics Technician first. You're going to come across Regeneration by just playing anyway. Um, because I think you get it as a free thing. But having something like this is good because you want to keep your turret alive. You want to keep your Spitfire turret alive for the longest possible. Spitfire turret is like your friend. Um, you want to keep it alive. When I was talking about... Um, stuff you would need implants wise most of them are very gimmicky but i feel that the most used ones are sweeper hood regeneration robotics tech you would use ammo printer survivalist and you might use this if and that's a big if you might use this if you use a monitor turret. Um, if you use a spitfire turret so this is at max rank it will spot people for you I wouldn't recommend getting it straight off the bat. Same as Sidewinder. Sidewinder is very good to use. You could use Sidewinder. You could use elect yeah, Robotics Tech. And then you could pick something like the Bandit. And as you see here, you can sway to the side really quick. So really useful. Or would I recommend getting it straight off the bat? No. You want to you stick to the basics. 
you want to stick to the basics regeneration and then that's it mines wise you always want to run bouncing betties you could run a zolary shield you really tend to only run hard light barrier when you're trying to cover a doorway so what do i mean by that let me just show you quick so if you was in a building if this was the building you could put down something like this and then they would have to jump over this in order to get in they would also struggle to hit you because they might end up hitting the barrier instead so this was an actual grenade trying to do damage to you so yeah so it protects you a little bit most of the stuff you unlock later on as you go on you don't unlock it straight off the bat so yeah so i hope this gave you an insight into the engineer and what you meant to be doing as an engineer what kind of you should be building um, and stuff like that you know the engineer people get confused with the engineer and they tend to pick it first out of every class the medic is a hundred times better in my opinion at point holding and point stuff you want to be picking engineer as a vehicle class really you might go to the point and defend using barriers mines and stuff like that that's also useful it's also a good thing to do but generally as an engineer you're not frontlining i keep saying it because people get confused and yeah so anyway i'm going to leave the video there i'm going to talk in the next video about advanced tactics with um, the engineer and what you generally use it for so yeah so i'm going to leave it there i'll let you get on i hope you have a good weekend the weekend's upon us i hope there's a lot of people out there coming up planet side gonna have a great time and i'll see you soon guys